Hey guys, welcome to part 7 of my video series on creating a serverless REST API using AWS and the Python programming language. In the last video, we saw how to integrate Flask with AWS Lambda. Now, in order to create a REST API, let's move to the second most important thing, which is persistent storage. By persistent storage, I mean we need some kind of database where we can store the student data for our student API. For this, we are going to go with DynamoDB. DynamoDB is an AWS product, which is a fast and flexible NoSQL database service. It is undoubtedly the first database choice for creating serverless REST APIs. In this video, we are going to get a brief overview of DynamoDB followed by a simple tutorial where we will learn how to interact with DynamoDB using Python. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so as I told you already, what is Amazon DynamoDB? It is just a fast and flexible NoSQL database service for any scale. So the benefits that you get by using DynamoDB instead of other NoSQL databases is that first it is providing you the performance at scale, which means that it is automatically scalable and it can scale up to any limit that you might want. So that is the first point that is the benefit of DynamoDB. Secondly, there are no servers to manage. So basically, you are not going to create a server first and then install the DynamoDB uh, database and then start it and so on. DynamoDB is serverless, which means that you are not the person who is responsible for provisioning it or managing it and you do not have to install any software, right? So you just have to interact with DynamoDB through some APIs. So there are no servers to manage, which is great because we are also creating a serverless REST API. And thirdly, it is enterprise ready, which means that it enables you to build business critical applications at scale. And it is quite mature. It is a very mature product. It has been there for a while and it supports almost everything which a business might need in terms of a NoSQL database. So these are some of the benefits and different kind of applications for which DynamoDB is a great fit are serverless web apps, mobile backends and some microservices and it works well with all of them. So now what we're going to do uh, is that we're going to see how to use DynamoDB and we're going to also see how to interact with it using Python. So let's get started with that. Okay, so here I am at my AWS management console and you just need to search for DynamoDB and then you will be taken to the DynamoDB dashboard. I'm just going to click on create table. And now the thing is that DynamoDB is a schema-less database which only requires two things from you. First thing is the name of a table and the second thing is a primary key. Now as you know, a primary key is a key which helps you to uniquely identify the items that you have in your table. And the special thing about DynamoDB is that it allows you to provide a primary key in terms of a single key or a dual key. So let me just first of all give me the name of my table. Let me call it students since we are making a student API and in the partition key. So here's the thing, um, the primary key can be a single key, then we call it a partition key. And if you use two keys to create a single primary key, then you can provide two fields from your table. But we're not going to go with that for now. And all the advanced concepts of DynamoDB will be discussed in some other video. So partition key, I'm going to make it ID and we're going to go with default settings. So I'm just going to click on create. So my table is being created and now since it got created, we can click on items so to see what all items do we have in our table. So currently um, there is no item in my table. So I can click on create item to create a new item for my DynamoDB table. So ID, let me make it one and then I will click on append to add one more field. Let me make it name. Let me call it Nikhil. Let me add one more. Let me call it um, branch and let us give it value computer engineering COE and so on. So I'm just going to click on save. And now, as you can see, my first row is ready, right? So in this way, you can add data to your DynamoDB table. But now the thing is that we do not want to use DynamoDB this way. We want to use DynamoDB programmatically. We need to be able to 
add items to our table read items from the table update items in the table as well as delete them right so in order to access dynamodb programmatically we will need the aws sdk kit for python which is called boto3 so boto3 is uh, what we're gonna use so if we just look at quick start so what you need to do is just use this simple pip command to install boto3 pip install boto3 okay and once that is done uh, ensure that you have done the AWS configure part which we have already discussed in some previous video right so you can use AWS configure to set up your AWS CLI where you can provide your AWS access key ID and the secret access key and also set up your region as well so by providing all these things Boto3 will be able to take actions on your AWS resources on your behalf okay so once that is done you will need to import Boto3 and then you will create a Boto3 resource of the desired AWS product so let's get started with that so I already have a Jupyter notebook here and I'm just gonna do import Boto3 so we have imported Boto3 and now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create let me call it DDB only DDB is equal to Boto3 dot resource and here we are going to pass the name of the resource we want DynamoDB. So now I have a kind of a client you can say a high level client we have which we can use to do various things in our DynamoDB. So the first thing that I would like to do is to create a table instance. So I will do ddb.table in which I will pass the name of my table students and let me call it table. So we have created a let's just just see table okay so what we have done is we have created a dynamodb table instance and now what we can do is we can take various actions on this table so table dot um let us try get item so table dot get item will take the key that you need to provide in order to identify the item that you want to get so i will just make a key argument here in which I will pass the name of my key first which is ID and its value which is one now I have written one under single quotes because one is a string because while specifying the type of my primary key I had specified that it is a string so let's run it and wait for it and look at that we got the data we have got the item right so item id is one name is nikhil branch is coe so yeah so in this way we can get the items from our table which is very simple which is a very simple command that we have here and now let us try to see how to put items into our table so table dot okay so table dot put item in which you have to provide an item argument in which you have to provide any json data so the key is compulsory that you need to provide so let me make key as two and let me provide the name as ravi and let me provide the branch as it okay so it's as simple as that so let me run it so it seems that it was successful so let me just go back to my table and try to reload and look at that we get two entries here so in this way we are able to add data to our table as well so let's move on to the next thing that we might want to do which is maybe to delete an item right so how to delete delete is very simple you need to do table dot delete item in which again you need to provide the key argument which will help dynamodb to identify the particular item that you want to delete so id is what we need to provide and let us delete this uh, the item with the id too so let me run it so it seems that it worked so let me just reload my table so look at that only one entry remaining now right so we have discussed get put delete so the last thing that is remaining i think is the patch which is to update an existing item so let us see how to do that so in order to do that uh, we will use table dot update item now this is uh, a bit different what you need to do is first of all you need to identify the item that you want to update so again you have to provide key right and the id let's call it one and then you have to provide another field which is called attribute updates okay so it is not able to identify so attribute updates so if you uh, want to know how i know all these um, values uh, or the way in these functions are structured what you can do is i will provide this jupyter notebook in which we have this link of the boto3 documentation so 
in this Boto3 documentation, here is a DynamoDB section. So here you can go through all the different commands and the different kind of actions that you can take on your table. So it is as simple as that. So yeah, so let us search for update. Look at that. So for updating item, there are many different ways. Uh, I'm going to show you a simple one. So let us go with a simple one. So and you can always do shift tab here again, right? To see what all can you do. So in the update item here you have, you have to provide a key, then you can provide attribute updates. So this is what I'm going to go with. So attribute updates is equal to, then I have to specify the name of the attribute that I want to uh, update. Let me say that I want to just update the name of this particular student. So the name and now what is the new value? Let's say the value is NIK only currently it is Nikhil. So let me make it short and action what action do i want to take over this value so there are three things that i can do over a particular value i can add something to it i can uh, put a new value complete new value uh, in its place or i can delete it so currently i just need to put a new value in place of the existing value so i'm just gonna do action put that's it so this is all we need here so let me run it okay so it ran and now if you try to look at our table we will see that the name is now nick right it has it got updated so yeah so we have got uh, the hold of four operations that we will need for creating our rest api and i think one more operation i can add here which is to get the list of students right so in order to get the list of students or the list of items from your dynamity table there are two ways one is called scan another one is called query so let us check them out so querying and scanning. So in scan, all the items in the table are being scanned. Whereas in query, you query the items in a bit more efficient manner. So that is the basic difference between the two. But here we need only scan. So I'm just going to do table dot scan. Okay. And before that, let me add one more item to my table. Um, let me add one more type item table dot put item okay so how many items are there in my table there are two of them so now finally if i do table dot scan i will get both the items look at that we got the first item we got the second item so in this way we are able to scan our table as well right so yeah so this was how you can use dynamo db to structure the um all, all the things related to data in your student API, all the things related to resources that you have in your API, right? And I have not discussed um, some other things which are related to DynamoDB, such as the partition key sort key concept, uh, which is the composite primary key concept. Other than that, there is also a concept of indexes, right? So there are a few things which, have, which I have not covered in this particular video because they are not required right now for making our API, but in future, I will surely try to make a video, detailed video on how to deal with DynamoDB for various um, needs. Okay. So yeah. So in this particular uh, video, if you have any doubt, you can put them in the comment section below. And that's it from this video. Thanks for watching.